I think I'm a bloody miracle considering the life I led. Don't you? Bloody miracle. My mother was very introverted, depressive like I get. <laughs> and I'm gregarious like my father. So I have the two. And my father was an enormous flirt. I don't think, I think it was a, an arranged marriage. I think it was an arranged marriage. And uh, she came from a very wealthy family and he came from a very educated family, so you know. They were wonderful people, very cultured. My father loved lecturing on, on literature and poetry and so on. He actually was a, deg a degree in chemistry from Russia. And my mother must have been the first dentist in Russia. She never worked though, but she was the first one who studied dentistry. I came out of our block of flats and I crossed the road and I saw a friend from school, school friend. And she said, I'm off to England next Wednesday. I said, how come? Well, I went to the community centre. I swore I was stateless. My parents had to promise me the, the railway that the parents would pay for the journey, for the school there, for education. I said, tell me where the community centre is. And I went and I swore that I was stateless, my parents would pay everything. Everybody knew my father was a Lithuanian honorary consul. But times were so bad that you didn't go into details. And then I went home, I said, Mama, I'm leaving for England on Wednesday, get me ready. You're paying my journey, you're paying the school. You're paying my education, and if you cry at the station, I never write to you again. I was a tough kid. But you know, the Nazis were around already. I went with the last kinder transport to England. And my sister was supposed to join me in her versum on the way, but she never turned up. Of course, the war began. I didn't hear any more from. I did have. I finally found. I found a letter from my father, 1941. I found a letter from my sister, 42. She only got uh, taken to Auschwitz in 43. In January, she was arrested. Both my parents were extremely delicate, nice people. They, I met a few survivors from the camps. When I got a charter flight, someone gave me a lift somewhere. <laughs> and I looked at them, my parents would have never survived. You really had to be a certain type, apart from having a lot of luck, to have survived that time. So, of course, I got hooked almost immediately and um, I started going to auction houses. And I remember my first auction at Christie's, I sat next to an American girl, I was chatting, and suddenly I hear, knock down to the lady in the gangway. I look, oh, it was me. <laughs> Huge picture, four men had to bring it, had to use a whole wall for it, but actually, I sold it and I made a profit. <laughs> that was my first picture. Would have been better if I hadn't made a profit, <laughs> because then I got hooked. Professor Ken Howard, Royal Academician, and he's all about light. Ken Howard is all about light. It was exhibited at the Royal Academy in 1995, at a summer exhibition, which is very important. I loved it when it went well. I like shows, I like people. I, I do and I don't, you know. It's a gamble, but then I am a gambler. This painting is by Alfred Daniels, who unfortunately died recently. And he was very well known for his city scenes and so on. And what I like about it, it's got this red bust on my name is on it, which means 
that whatever happens, I'm still at it and I'm going as much as possible. <laughs>